If I were a chicken, this is what it would look like. We are inside of a chicken brooder right now. What is a chicken brooder, you ask? Thank you for asking. It's where little itsy bitsy baby chicks come after they hatch out of an egg and you Stop! If I, if I was a chicken, this is how you would look to me. Oh, well, you'd have water and food, so you'd be all right. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna clean it out. We just bring in the, uh, our mini trash can over with the chicken feed for the baby chicks. Okay. So I'm gonna clean it all out and then I'm gonna, you want me to put new pine shavings in it right now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Where are we hatching meat chickens first, right? Yeah, we're going to be hatching meat chickens. So we have to start incubating those eggs, but we need to get their house ready because they only incubate for 21 days. Oh, what are you growing there? Here, here, You said watermelon? Yeah. And then me and Chris wow. here. Like that looks great, Maddie. Mm -hmm. this up we're just throwing it in the garden and so we can just um once we do the garden we can just till it all up together because this is this is aged it's from last year we're going to be talking about mistake gardeners a lot of gardeners make an easy easy mistake so stay tuned for that because we're going to be going over that some more and we're going to be going over different types of soils and things that you can use here's one of the things we're going to show you how to use today so we got to clean this all up right here but um this is like it's supposed to be like a mama hen and they get under there and it keeps them all nice and toasty warm So there you have it. I will clean their water and their feeder when they get closer to it. And then also their little their little warm mama there. And then this is their heating lamp. I'll clean all that when we get closer because it's gonna get dusty and stuff before then. We prop the stuff up on wood so that the pine shavings and everything, it just keeps it, keeps it clean for the babies. Right here is a feed and an extra feeder and water and we keep it in a metal trash can right outside with a little scooper and it's right next to the brooder so that it's easy to take just easy to feed them and to take care of them well this is our chicken feed I uh, when I was borrowing my dad's trailer I uh, went ahead and took advantage of getting a, a large order of chicken feed so organized the small shed and we put it in there and so now I'm topping off all the feeders and then did you see I ripped the table out babe no I didn't yeah see so this is our uh, small garden I guess we're gonna call it that uh, the table that I ripped out was right here we used to use it that was in the greenhouse that was here but uh, we took it out because we we're gonna expand this so we wanted to be able to use all that space and then we decided we're not going to um, garden in the front anymore where we were said we're going to do it we're actually going to extend this section out another like 10 feet or so so we'll probably take a if you just match like a straight line we'll probably, come all, we'll probably come all the way out to about here and then straight out and then over and that i think will give us the equivalent of what we're going to do in the front and then this here um, was given to us so we were going to use it as water troughs for the cow but then with just all the rust and stuff everything in it we decided we're going to use it for a raised bed um, which is pretty cool because then we'll be able to go over kind of the details of setting up raised beds and stuff with you guys so this is not this is completely empty so as you can tell so we're going to move it and actually put that in the front on the patio because the patio gets a lot of sun 
All right, so we've been working outside. Well, they've been working outside all day. I worked a little bit outside, a lot inside too, because we're getting ready for a special visitor tomorrow. So by the time you're watching this, that visitor will uh, be here. Yes. So we are sitting down for dinner now, and we have the beef short ribs, farm fresh, with garden green beans from last year and some butter bread and french fries. I'll cry. Right. Yes, Jesus, thank you for our food. Make sure we have a good day and good day yet tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Good job. All right, Cody, what do you think a mistake a person could make when they're starting seeds to grow a plant or making a garden? If you, if you accidentally put a little too much soil on it, it will grow. Okay, so you put the seeds in too deep. Yep. yep. What about, no, what about you, Maddie? What you think? Um, Graham, what you think? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, yeah, daddy's, daddy's cool. Mommy, what do you think is a mistake people make when they seed or garden? The type of soil. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Because they probably will think if I'm starting seeds, I need seed starter soil. And that's not true. I would say a mistake that people make is they either overwater or underwater. Daddy. Meaning they don't water enough or they water too much and drown the seeds out. Oh yeah, nobody. So we know. we're gonna talk. We've been talking here while dinner's been made, been prepping and making for the boys and for us about soil and and seed starting and gardening and I'm sure that a lot of you have like a lot of questions or especially if you just started and there's probably you know tons of information out there I'm sure on you know what kind of soil you should use and all this so we're kind of go, gonna go over some just thoughts and ideas right mm -hmm. and what what we found out what we do that works yeah so these are our opinions right these are just ours and what works yep so we do we want to go over the five s's yeah so we want to go over we came up with five s's to, for uh, seed starting and gardening and so the first one is sunlight right so you're gonna do you're gonna make sure that your plants have enough sun the second one is soil. It has to have really good soil. So sun, soil. The third is what we call soak, meaning watering. You gotta water it. And then saturation it deals satur we chose saturation as number four because um, having the right soil and what's what's in it will help the soil to retain the water well. The fifth S is stagnant. And that is, a lot of people tend to leave like these little greenhouse things. They leave the covers on, right? And, uh, but when they start to sprout, they don't pull the cover off. And so it, the plants get actually stagnant and moldy and mild, mildew and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, but do you want to show them the soil? Yeah. You want to model it out there for them? Oh, yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead with your bad self. All right, so there is a way to make your own soil, which that will be another video. But, um... Instead of seed starting soil, see the problem with seed starting soil is there's enough nutrients in it to start the seed and it only lasts for a week or two. And so I personally think you should start with potting mix because um, you don't want to just grab dirt from your yard because it's too heavy, too dense, and that would be like your garden soil down here, which is also too heavy, too dense, so you don't want garden soil, but you do want potting mix, which has nutrients that feeds the, the seed uh, for as long as it's in that tray. It'll be just fine. If you do a seed starter, you will have to continue to feed it and give it nutrients. So if you want to just plant a seed and go, that's your potting mix because it's light and fluffy and your seeds will be able to uh, break through it um, and the roots will be able to grow in it and will also be uh, nice and nourishing for your seeds. Yep. And so we know that this stuff can be costly inexpensive depending on where you go and what you get and where you live yeah so you know 
depend on what you need like don't be scared to kind of mix this with other soil that you have it doesn't have the whole thing doesn't have to be potting soil right you can mix it with garden soil and stuff like that if you wanted so another um thing that i've been doing some research on is that if where all those leaves are out there they've been sitting out there breaking down gotten the worms and the, the organisms that they need um for really good soil so if you don't have the money I believe that if you went out there, you raked out those leaves out of the way and you dug up some soil and filled up a pot or a wheelbarrow and used that, you'd probably have pretty decent success. So these are just some ideas for seed soil, right? And what we do. Isn't that right, Mama? That's right. So we're going to be coming out with a video here on planting our seeds soon, right? How to plant the seeds. Yeah, how to plant the seeds. She keeps me, she's the one that keeps me in line. So, so as we are saying, we're just kind of going over some ideas for you, but here's a book we want to reference for you guys that is filled with amazing information. It's called The New Seed Starters Handbook. But anyways, here's the picture. We'll, we'll, we'll find the book and put the link in the description. But this is packed full of like all the information and breakdowns and the spacing and everything. Yeah, so I reread it every year. But, um, and I plan out my garden accordingly. But, so, like, I have stuff written all in here. But in the back, it actually has a guide. Don't do that. Chapter 35, Growing Garden Vegetables and Fruits from Seed. And it goes through each vegetable or fruit that you would grow from seed. And it tells you if it should be a transplant or a direct seed. It's really important that you're not transplanting vegetables that are supposed to be a direct seed for example carrots you do not want to transplant you want to direct seed them into your garden when it is time right. um, beans you want to direct seed you do not want to do a transplant on some of those we There's will a write a list in the description okay of what vegetables and fruit that you would direct seed versus transplant yeah okay. direct seed meaning putting directly into your garden yeah when it is time yeah like she said we'll go ahead and give you that list in the description what else did you want to go over now something to keep in mind is it's very important to time your transplants accordingly so also in the description we will write a ex example list of how you should know when you should start your seeds. Some things take 10 to 12 weeks, some things take up to 13 weeks in the seed starter, and some are only five weeks. This is the greenhouse we were talking about. Once you, if you have something like this, even if it's not the same blocks, but if you have a greenhouse like this, when they begin to sprout, when you start to see some sprouts, you're going to angle it. You're just gonna kind of drape it over so there's some airflow. Once everything has sprouted, you know, some may not take, but uh, once you know, you think, okay, that's got to be all of them that are going to take. You completely take it off. If not, um, you will begin to see like this this white mold on it, or just have too much moisture, and it's just time to take the top off. They're old enough to take the top off. And one of the S's we were dealing with was stagnant, and that's if you leave that on while they and they're sprouted, that's what happens. You get like this stagnant. Oh air and too much moisture and then everything just gets bad yeah and so next week we will go over exactly we will show you how to put like start your seeds like actually start them in the soil you will watch us put ours in the soil because there is technique to that as well and if you have any other questions we you just comment them below on the youtube video because we also have a facebook page and instagram but just put it all under the youtube video so that way we can just access that and we will make sure we address those questions in our um, seed starting or actual seed starting video what do you think what do you think <laughs> <Say> hello <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.